Okay. Right, morning once again. Let's uh, pray and we'll get. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you that we could uh, gather together, Lord. Thank you for the privilege of uh, looking to your word, and uh, Lord, thank you for the privilege that uh, that you are with us, Lord, the author of uh, the scriptures, to uh, give us understanding, and uh, Lord, to uh, lead us into all truth and to guide us. Father God, we thank you, and uh, and we ask that you would um, do that today to each one of us, Lord in our hearts, in our minds, Lord, enable us to be edified through the work of your Spirit. And uh, I pray that you would quicken your word to us, Lord. May your word be quickened to us, Lord. Yes, Lord. And to that end, we we yield ourselves, Lord. We submit ourselves to you, Father God. Yes, Lord, have your way with us. Have your way with us. Write your word upon our hearts, Lord. We thank you that your word is like a fire that burns and like a <clears throat> like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. Yes, Lord, we pray that every stronghold, let it be broken down in your mighty name. Lord, I pray the truth of your word will drive away, um, dispel all darkness and lies and deception of the enemy. Lord, let your word, God, anchor us to the truth. And Father God, we pray that... Uh, as you were, as you said, Lord, that the truth will set us free. Yes, Lord, thank you. Let there be freedom and liberty, Lord, even as your word sets us free. Lord, <clears throat> we thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Okay. Praise God uh, for his word, for his truth. Right, that really sets us free, and uh, you know that's one of the things that we can expect. You know, Jeremiah twenty-three and twenty-nine, um, twenty-three verse twenty-nine says, "His word is like a hammer; his word is like fire, fire that burns, burns away the chaff, burns away everything that uh, is not required to be there, and also purifying. You know, does the work of purifying fire does that, and also his word is like a hammer that breaks the rock." Um, in, into pieces, you know, the hardest parts of us. Uh, maybe we are, you know, still resistant to uh, the work, uh, uh, to His work, and uh, in the Word of God breaks the hardest rock in pieces. So praise God for that. All right. Okay. So last class, um, we looked at the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of uh, the Lord Jesus. You know, we, we finished with the um, the work of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, and then we went on to uh, study about uh, what is the, uh, you know, God the Holy Spirit, what did he do during the time of, uh, in the life of Jesus? And specifically, we looked at uh, just before Jesus or around the time that Jesus was born. Yeah, uh, you know, we looked at some of those uh, situations and uh, we looked at what the Holy Spirit was doing and uh, and how he was moving on the lives of people, right? Uh, page 11, chapter 4. So we looked at several references uh, last class, um, um, how the Holy Spirit uh, moved in the lives of uh, Mary and Elizabeth and Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, Simeon, who was there in the temple, um, and uh, also, uh, you know, John the Baptist himself and how he announces the coming of the Messiah, uh, announces about the forerunner and how the Lord Jesus will baptize with the Holy Spirit with fire and so on. Right? And then we looked at how uh, the Holy Spirit baptized um, the Lord Jesus even as he came out of the river. And, uh, you know, the, we saw that picture of Trinity there, uh, where uh, the triune God, where we heard the voice of the Father saying, Beloved, this is my beloved Son in whom well, I'm well pleased. And then we saw, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit descending like a dove on the Son. So the Son, the Holy Spirit, and the Father. Right? And how he was led by the Spirit to go into the wilderness and... Uh, uh, and how he was tempted by the um, tempter, Satan himself, and uh, how he overcame. And he came back in the power of the Holy Spirit, and uh, he ministered, right? So we see that um, whatever ministry he did, 
on the earth, he ministered by the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we looked at a very important aspect last class about how the Lord Jesus, uh, and we were referring to Philippians chapter 2, and how he made himself of no reputation, how he emptied himself of something, right? And, uh, and very um, importantly, we saw that, uh, yes, he is deity, and uh, deity wrapped in humanity, uh, wrapped in human flesh. And so as he walked on the earth, he did not display the, the characteristics of deity in the sense that he was uh, not omni, omnipresent. He was in one place, uh, one location at a time. He was not in multiple places at a certain time. right? And then he, we see that he was also... Um, uh, not omnipotent in the sense he was tired, he was hungry, and we also saw that he was, um, you know, he grew in wisdom, right? He grew in wisdom and in favor with God and man. Right? Uh, Luke records that. So uh, he was taught by the Father. He saw, he did what the Father did, he and what the Father spoke. You know, that is what he he spoke, and so on. So John talks about John chapter one talks about the glory of God, okay, uh, that uh, he walked in a glory. And we looked at what glory was, uh, the word glory, what, what does it refer to, okay, the word glory, and uh, which is uh, in Greek, which is doxa, it talks about the manifestation or being made visible about who God is and what he does. Okay. So in John chapter 1, we saw that um, this is what he did. Uh, he manifested his glory. And we saw, John says, John testifies and he says, we saw his glory. Um, let's look at that verse again, John chapter 1 and verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. Beheld means to we saw his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Okay, so uh, we saw the glory of God. We saw what he did and, uh, you know, how he moved about, how he ministered and all that. Okay, so we, it says, you know, we saw his glory. Uh, but the Lord himself says that um, when he prays in John chapter 17, you know, restore that glory, bring back the glory that I had with you when I was with you. You know, when I had, I had when I was with you, which means that the Lord, as he was filled with the Holy Spirit, he was empowered by the Holy Spirit, um, and he went about doing the ministry. Uh, he went about news, he went about healing the sick, he went about delivering people, he went about doing all the signs and wonders. He did it by the power of the Holy Spirit as man. Okay, And we see that... Um, uh, you know, the, the apostles and uh, the disciples also that. Okay, we looked at that. And because of it, the Lord Jesus says that these things you will do also. Okay, he looks at the disciples and he says, uh, he who believes in me, the things that I do, he will do also. John chapter 14. Okay. And the reason is this. What is the reason? Because I go to my father. <laughs> and the fact that he was going to the Father to send the Holy Spirit and the believer empowered by the Holy Spirit walking in the footsteps of Jesus as a follower of the Lord Jesus will continue to do the things that he will do also and the Lord Jesus also said John chapter 14 is and greater things he will do so which is amazing which is uh, <laughs> which is um, uh, something you know um, uh, uh, which is which is for every which is a privilege of every believer okay so so we don't have to look down and say okay i'm human and uh, well the lord jesus he did it because he's god well the truth is that he walked and he ministered by the power of the holy spirit and the same um you know, the, the way he ministered, the same privilege is available for each one of us. You know, that is great news, right? So it's not like uh, 
we we can do ministry in our own strength or you know we have to just come up with something and do it and get by no we are empowered by the spirit on high right? uh, our sufficiency is from god we are empowered by his spirit to do the things that he's called us to do okay so we look at more of that about the baptism of the holy spirit the gifts of the holy spirit released in us and through us and so on okay so what did the lord teach uh, we are on page 12 if you are following in the notes uh, what did the lord teach about the holy spirit okay uh, what are some of his teachings about the holy spirit of course um, he said the holy spirit will come he will um, he will be the teacher uh, he will show you he will tell you things uh, he will remind you you know all that we see in john chapter 15 john chapter 14 15 and 16 um if you read through okay, some of something specifically we look at matthew 10 and verse 20 matthew chapter 10 and verse uh, 20 probably we should um, 17 onwards so uh, maybe 16 you know uh, the lord is saying behold i send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves therefore be wise as serpents and harmless as doves but beware of men for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues you will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the gentiles but when they deliver you up do not worry about how or what you should speak for it will be given you in that hour um what you should speak for it is not you who speak but the spirit of your father who speaks in you Right. So the Lord very, very um, uh, specifically saying that when you are persecuted, when you are brought up, you know you don't have to premeditate and uh, you don't have to, um, you know, think about what needs to be said, what needs to be done. Well, the Lord, the Holy Spirit, He will guide you. He will show you. He will teach you what needs to be. Uh, the Holy Spirit will speak. And other scriptures, you know, Mark thirteen and verse eleven also talk about the same thing. That the Holy Spirit, when you are delivered, when you are in that place, you know, you don't have to worry. The Holy Spirit will give you the words. The Holy Spirit will speak. Okay. Now, uh, a wrong application of this would be, okay, um, I need to speak, uh, preach on. Uh, preach this Sunday. Well, now I I don't have to prepare. The Holy Spirit will speak through me, so you know I'll just go up, show up, and the Spirit will speak. Right. So that will be a wrong application of this verse because the context here is uh, it's really uh, yes, the Spirit will speak through you, and He will give you the words to speak. But it's the context of persecution and being delivered up. uh you know for the sake of the faith for the sake of following jesus right so that's the i uh, think yes but, uh, but but other times also yes god will speak right suppose you know yeah you know, well you know put in a sudden situation where you have to share the word and uh, and somebody says you know why don't you share and then you you saying okay but you've not you know you're not really sat and prepared a message but at the even at that time you know god will give the words to speak and uh, and you can speak but that does not excuse us from spending time in his presence and waiting on the lord and receiving uh, what needs to be shared right um, so uh, a wrong application of this verse would be you know every time you are invited you know i'm not going to prepare i'm just going and uh, you know god holy spirit will speak through me okay that's a wrong application of the verse okay okay so the holy spirit uh, so the lord also spoke about the blasphemy of the spirit right he said that uh this uh, especially uh, when did he when did he say this you know about the blasphemy of the holy spirit he said that those who blaspheme against the spirit it will not be forgiven them okay so this was uh, when he went and delivered a, a person who had a, a, a mute spirit okay a, 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 an evil spirit which was causing the person not to see not to speak right that was a spirit so the lord jesus delivered that person and the religious leaders said you know this person this jesus is casting out demons uh, by the power of belzebub okay just one second sorry by the power of belzebub so they were saying that uh, you know this is um this is 
is doing it by the power of an evil spirit an evil spirit um, or satan is who is empowering him now if you look at that uh, you know we can say maybe uh, maybe they were speaking out of ignorance maybe they were uh, they didn't know but the fact is that when we look at um, the the book of john we see that they knew exactly okay the the john chapter 9 if we read verse uh, 31 okay uh, so john chapter 11 and verse 40 uh, 46 onwards okay john chapter 11 verse 46 some of them went away to the pharisees and told them the things jesus did uh, then the chief priests and the pharisees gathered a council and said what shall we do for this man works many signs if we let him alone like this everyone will believe in him and the romans will come and take away both our place and nation and one of them caiphas being high priest that year said to them um, you know nothing at all nor do you consider etc but the fact is that um, you know he was actually prophesying uh, that day but the fact is that this was the intention you know if we let him like this everyone will believe in him the romans will come and take away our place and nation you know they they realized that he is working many signs um and they attributed what was done by god to demons so and the lord jesus said that you know uh, this blasphemy will not be forgiven this is uh, blasphemy against the holy spirit right so uh, so that's that is something that he shared about the spirit about the blasphemy of the spirit okay let's look at a few other scriptures where the lord jesus taught about the holy spirit okay let's look at uh, luke chapter 11 okay uh, question Somebody... uh, yes pastor so something related to what we just discussed um so does this also mean uh, that when we question the works of the holy spirit that is blasphemy that's uh, why i ask is um, sometimes when we see ministers during ministry if something uh which is not according to our sense is proper and something like wild happening screaming and running around and things like that yeah um yeah. so um is it is it also i mean if we try to question that is it also a part of blasphemy um no it's not because we're not attributing we're not saying that it's uh you know it's not of god and we're not so we, we we are questioning in the sense that god knows our heart okay so god knows our heart we are actually uh, genuinely we we want to know you know yes yes we are offended our senses are offended you know culturally at the at the, uh, at the root of it you know we really want to know so uh, we're not really blaspheming uh, the work of the spirit then you know we are asking god um Uh, but yes uh, we you know if we are going to be uh, launching a campaign you know and then uh, of the things that we do not understand and then we're going to you know uh, now especially you know today's day and time we can do that right very we, things are very visible social media etc and then we can say oh this man is doing this 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 uh, well, yeah then we we are in a way you know offending god uh, and uh, you know we're leading a lot of people astray um and we are doing it in the again you know it, it, it's because of the ignorance of our own uh, heart and and that even that will be forgiven that's not a it's not a you know uh, because we are uh, and we come to repentance when we know right but when we know and still when we continue you know that's an act of rebellion that's an act of uh, you know that's the thing uh, so till we come to that place of asking forgiveness you know uh, you know then then we are in a placing ourselves in a dangerous place so that's the thing so uh, when do we reach that place uh, you know the point of no return or whatever, I, we don't know really but uh, but the fact is that uh, if we know that it is the work of god and we are attributing that to uh, the devil's work you know then that is really dangerous that that would be because they we are blasphemy against god against his spirit and uh, that's dangerous yeah and so how should we approach if we see something which is um which we think i mean maybe according to our senses it, it doesn't look perfect or it doesn't 
look correct yeah. according to the word how should we approach yeah. that person? yeah so um yeah so that, that, see that was my experience also initially you know like uh, when you looked at the work of the spirit and the baptism of the spirit and praying in tongues and all that well, from the background that i come from for me it was all it seemed uh, you know uh, a kind of uh, you know i'm not used to all that so um so the right thing for us would be to to ask god and say lord you know i i don't know it's it's all disturbing but you teach me you show me it's disturbing for me i i don't know i can't i'm not able to make sense of this um and, but you teach me you show me if there is you know is there anything genuine right you teach me you show me um so and and the lord will show uh, the genuine thing see you know like for example uh, see there are excesses excess happening in the, you know manifestation of the flesh and uh, excess happening uh, along with the genuine right um because simply because we are human right and uh, and for for me what happened was the lord really uh, you know led me to certain sources uh, certain people who uh, really uh, taught uh, the genuine you know uh, hey you don't have to shout and scream you can just receive and uh, you know if you want to shout and scream go ahead and do it but you know i write what we see in uh, in 1 corinthians uh, 15 right um, yeah the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet and so on so so people who were taught that uh, and uh, and also certain certain testimonies that i have read you know uh, about uh, uh, some of the churches some of the church background people came from how they were filled with the spirit and the genuine work of god was done in them and all the gifts released and and this was a you know, very 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 conservative church very conservative church uh, unbelievably conservative and uh, and how the work was done through them so when i read all that you know that created a hunger you know in my own spirit for i said god i i need that i want that so yeah so that would be the approach um, like when we see certain things and we're not able to wrap our minds around it and say god you know this goes beyond me um, this is not what i'm used to but you show me you teach me and god would right yeah um, so zelitoli's question yes yes john thank you Uh, you you have anything else john sorry i kind of interrupted uh, no boss no yeah this is fine okay okay so zelitel is question is yes blasphemy against the spirit now this is uh, this is what the lord jesus taught uh, taught you know um so he, he, in fact uh, he um, and that is what we have been you know we, we've been looking at that he said that uh, the ba- blasphemy against the spirit will not be forgiven and the reason was this that the, uh, the pharisees were attributing the work of god okay, because the lord jesus says you know if i cast out the spirit by the finger of god surely the kingdom of uh, god has come upon you right so but the religious leaders were attributing this <coughs> excuse me were attributing this to the work of Uh, the demons work of satan so and uh, and the lo- knowing fully well that this was this was a supernatural work by god right um and then john chapter 11 what we the verse just we uh, read just now 47 onwards talks about the intention you know they knew the truth but they will fully um, ignore the truth or disregard the truth because of their own positions right um they wanted to retain their position and therefore they spoke ill about or uh, ill about the work of the spirit so that is blasphemy and uh, the lord says that it will not be for, uh, forgiven because of the fact that they were attributing this to uh, the work of the devil so that's the that's the reason zelitan thank you pastor i'm yeah. clear now okay 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 so normally when we you know uh, the the thing is this you no know, when we when we come across this scripture our uh, fear is oh did i blaspheme the spirit you know and am i have i committed the unpardonable sin you know i made fun of that person who was praying in tongues i made fun of that that preacher uh, <clears throat> and um, you know have i committed blasphemy the very fact that you have that struggle okay and the very fact that you want to get right with god okay now that's that's a great sign okay so you don't have to fear uh, the very fact that the posture of your heart is lord uh, i i don't want to do that uh, now that's a that's a thing which means that 
you are positioning you know we are positioning ourselves to receive uh, forgiveness from god so so don't worry right if if you uh, you know maybe you've made fun of a pastor made fun of a, you know a believer and and you found it so funny that you laughed and and you know all that happens right but the fact that you've come to that place you know you're asking yourself did i do that you know that means that your conscience is you know still sensitive wanting to please god wanting to get right with god and that's a great place to be in right so you're not committed the unpardonable sin you want to get right with god and that's that's fine your conscience is not seared uh, you're still sensitive uh, and you want to please god right so yeah just get right with god and keep going okay right okay so let's continue uh, let's look at a few other scriptures um uh look chapter 11 and verse 13 um look 11 and verse 13 okay um maybe we should just read, read from um verse 9 onwards so i say to you ask and it will be given to you seek and you will find knock and it will be open to you for everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks it will be opened verse 11 the lord goes on to explain okay if a son asks for bread from any father among you will he give him a stone or if he asks for a fish will he give him a serpent instead of a fish or if he asks for an egg will he offer him a scorpion if you then being evil know how how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your heavenly father give the holy spirit to those who ask him okay so so he's um, explaining to his disciples and uh, and he's saying you know this is it you know you ask you receive you um, you seek and you find and you knock it will be open to you and and the, then he qualifies it by saying you know if a son asks for bread will the father give him something that is not the genuine right so that's the thing in all these three cases bread will he give him a stone if he asks for fish will he give him a um a serpent a snake or will he give if he asks for an egg will he give him a scorpion now i know that in certain cultures this is food this is normal food right serpents or scorpions now like especially in places like vietnam you know i've seen that people normally it's part of the diet okay so so the way to understand it is that god is not giving them something you know for the jewish culture that these were all forbidden food right and this was not part of the diet right so the so the lord is explaining and he's saying you know if he asks for a fish will he give him a snake no if he asks for a uh, you know an egg will he offer him a scorpion no the father will not do it an earthly father with all his faults and you know uh, limitations and uh, and all that an earthly father will not do that so you know how much more your heavenly father how much more your heavenly father will give the holy spirit to those who ask him okay so so something that we learn here that when we ask um when we ask the lord you know the for the maybe the baptism of the spirit to be filled with the spirit he's more than willing he doesn't you know give something else okay um so many times people are ah, have that question you know if i ask uh, you know for the baptism of the holy spirit and to be able to pray in tongues what if i get filled with the evil spirit right i remember a friend when we in our youth group uh had that doubt and stop praying in tongues now she was actually filled with the spirit she she used to pray in tongues then she had a doubt she said what if i am you know this is an evil spirit which is working and she so she stopped praying in tongues right so the lord is putting to rest all such fears and doubts and saying hey who are you asking is he not your heavenly father is he not much better you know, a million times better than your earthly father if a earthly father with all limitations and weaknesses and frailties knows how to give good gifts to the son or daughter how much more your heavenly father he knows how much more your heavenly father will give the spirit give of the holy spirit to those who ask him 
Right? So we get an understanding of Father's heart to whom we are asking. So we don't have to fear. Right? We don't have to all have all these fears when it comes to um, the work of the Spirit. Uh, just because we have seen you know, people behave in strange ways, we don't have to you know, dis or throw the truth out. Right? Uh, go for the genuine. Ask for the authentic, and uh, and the Lord will give. Right? Okay. Let's look at another scripture, John chapter three, and verses one to eight. Now, this is something that we discussed in the morning also about um, uh, in the in the mentoring hour. Like right? John chapter three, this is the conversation between Nicodemus, a Pharisee, and the Lord Jesus. So he um, he asked the Lord. You know, um, you know, no one can do these signs unless God is with him. And the Lord replies, we are, let's read from verse 3. The Lord, uh, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay, then Nicodemus has a question, how can a man be born again? So he's looking at it in natural terms. You know, how can a man, can he in, enter a second time into a mother's womb and be born? So he's saying, Lord Jesus, what are you asking? And is it even possible? Then, uh, verse 5, Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. So he's explaining, you know, we're not talking about a, a, a natural birth. A natural birth would be a man entering the womb again and be born. So that which is born of the flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the spirit, of the Holy Spirit, is spirit. So he's saying that, uh, do not marvel, verse 7, that I say to you, that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Okay, and Nicodemus is again. Uh, he says, you know, he's in awe. He's saying, how can these things be? And then he goes on to talk about, um, you know, the Old Testament reference, and then he says, you know. God so loved the world, that verse that we all know, right? God so loved the world that he gave his begotten son, um, only begotten son, whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Um, but yeah, uh, we're looking at uh, verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So so the, the Lord Jesus teaching that the born again experience, the spiritual birth is brought about by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who causes it. Yes, um, when you look at the wind, we don't know where it's coming from. We can we can sense it. Um, I mean, we can't see it, but we can sense it. And so also this uh, this uh, born again experience, this new birth, you know that a transformative a transformative work has happened, and it's by the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so uh, so that is something that we see. Okay, then. John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24, it's it's about worship. Right? The Lord is again having a conversation. It's it's with the Samaritan woman. And uh, and the Lord teaches about worship um, or aligns something correctly you know, to the to the Samaritan woman because she asks, asks this question. Um, sorry, any questions? Um, Isaac? Okay. Okay, so she asked this question, right? Uh, Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, John chapter 4, verse 20. And the Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where you ought to worship. Then the Lord, Lord goes on to, Lord, Lord goes on to uh, you know, clarify. Um, Believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, worship what you do not know. We worship, we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Look at verse 23. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. So he's, he's clarifying and saying, you know, this is what worship is. Worship in spirit and truth. And this is what the Father is seeking. The Father is seeking true worshippers who will worship in spirit and 
truth. So when we say spirit and truth, we're talking about how, excuse me, how a person will worship out of the innermost being uh, from one spirit, and it's it's not you know it's it's uh, you know yes it 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 will have these outward things, but it's that is not the main thing, but it's from the spirit, uh, and he also goes on to say that. Um, you, you know, you you will worship it. Spirit and truth, meaning that you will, as led by the Spirit of God. Verse 24, God is spirit. Okay. And those who worship him must worship. So he goes on to say, this is how a person must worship. Right? In spirit and truth. Okay, so we see that um, the Lord Jesus teaching that. Then we look at uh, John uh, chapter 6 and verse 63, where he says, The words that I speak to you, these are spirit and they are life. Okay, let's look at that. John 6 and verse 63. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Okay, They are spirit and they are life. So saying it is a spirit who gives life. It is a Holy Spirit who brings life right, to your spirit. The words that I speak to you, the words that I'm that you're listening to, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Okay. So um, referring to his teachings, referring to the work of the Holy Spirit, saying this is what it is. They are spirit and they are life. Okay. Um any questions, any doubts so far? Okay. Okay, shall we look at a few more scriptures? Okay, let's look at John chapter 7, verse 38 and 39. Okay, uh, maybe from verse 37 onwards. On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Okay, um, So the Lord gave an invitation. He, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. If anyone thirsts, let him come and I'm going to quench his thirst. You know, let him come and drink. I'm going to have this, I'm going to engage with him and give him this experience. He who believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. So he's talking about the work of the spirit in a person's, in a person's heart, in a person's life. Um, of the innermost being saying, rivers will flow. Okay. And uh, and uh, the writer of uh, uh, the Gospel, John, is saying that this he spoke concerning the Spirit. Okay, so this work, this river flowing, is uh, is referring to the work of the Spirit, right? work of the Holy Spirit. So river flows, river uh, rivers do many things. You know, like if you find civilization actually comes up wherever the river flows because there's there's water, there's, uh, uh, you know, there's water for agriculture and so on. You know, there's probably um, water for sustenance. For, for, so, you know, he's, he's using that picture and saying this, you know, it's out of his heart will flow rivers, just like a natural river out of his heart. And this he spoke concerning the Spirit saying that, you know, this will be the experience of the believer, that the work of the Holy Spirit will touch, will others' lives, will will touch others' lives, will bless others' lives, will minister to others. And, uh, and he spoke about this Holy Spirit. And, and look at verse 39. Um, wh th whom those believing in him will receive. Okay, For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. So there, again, um, you know, it ties in with the what the Lord was saying in John chapter 14 also saying that I go to the Father. Right? So after his death on the cross, his burial, his resurrection, and him being glorified, being ascending and you know, going to the Father, uh, the Lord says, you know, I go to the Father so that I might send the helper. 
okay so here is he was not yet given the holy spirit was not yet given because he was not yet glorified okay but it is for those whom for everyone who believe in jesus so there's no partiality there's no you know it is for every person who believes in the lord jesus okay okay uh john chapter 14 i think uh, we're coming to those three chapters where there's a lot of references about the holy spirit right john chapter 14 and verse 16 and i pray the father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever okay so he's talking about the paracletos okay what is the meaning of water and the spirit aradhana uh what is the meaning of water and the spirit so are you referring to that uh Uh, John chapter seven that we looked at. Out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Um, Radna. Okay, so probably you are referring to that. Uh, please correct me if I am wrong. You are referring to the fact that Jesus is referring to um, you know the uh, out of the heart flowing rivers of living. water so so what is the lord saying you know is saying um, is if anyone is thirsting if anyone uh, let him come to me and drink you know another uh, scripture that we can look at is again john chapter 4 and in the conversation with the woman at the well um the lord says this right john chapter 4 and verse 10 okay if you knew the gift of god and who it is who says to you give me a drink you would have asked him and he would have given you living water okay so he's talking about uh, not about um, uh, the, the woman actually had come to the well to draw water physical natural water for her sustenance and for the whatever you know use but the lord is saying you know there's something more that uh, that i could have given uh, and i will give and that would be living water so he's talking about uh, uh, something that he is going to give that is going to quench um uh, not the natural thirst but a uh, spiritual thirst you know living water and he um goes on to say in verse 13 whoever drinks of this water will thirst again this natural water but whoever drinks of the water that i shall give him will never thirst but the water that i give shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life so he's talking about Uh, a spiritual thirst a spiritual quest um that a person who uh, you know uh, that every every uh, person has and that being quenched only by the lord jesus right so he's saying you know we ask i will give and this is a living water uh, which will quench the spiritual thirst or spiritual quest and this water will give him will become in him a fountain of water springing into everlasting life so he's saying this experience uh, will uh, you know will will become in him a fountain springing up into everlasting life so uh, so what is the meaning of water he's talking about the born again experience he's talking about the spirit of man coming alive he's talking about the work of the spirit in a human Uh, i mean in a human work of the holy spirit in a person's uh, in a person's life in a person's heart um which so he's is referring to that a person being born again right and becoming alive spiritually alive in god okay um and john chapter 7 also same you know same reference out of his heart will flow rivers of living water again the work of the spirit the lord himself i mean the uh, john clarifies right in verse 39 this he spoke concerning the spirit so that river of living water again brought about by the holy spirit so the life that a person lives uh, the ministry of the holy spirit through that person so uh, so the mean, meaning of living water is the work of the holy spirit uh, in a person's life uh, it could also mean that eternal life um that a person has because of jesus because of um, what the holy spirit does in a person's life okay does that help um 
is Aradhana here? Okay, I don't see. Okay, Aradhana, yeah. Okay, so um, so this is what it means. But when you look at um, John chapter three, right, in the in the conversation that Nicodemus has with the Lord Jesus, you know, that's why I just specifically wanted to know whether it was referring to these verses, because in John chapter three, um, uh, the Lord is uh, answering in John chapter three and verse five. Verse five, um, he says, "Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot." enter the kingdom of God. And then he goes on to explain, you know, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, that is born of the spirit is spirit. So um, water repre represents natural life, physical life again, you know, that which is, so he's contrasting between physical birth and spiritual birth, okay, in those verses, physical birth, spiritual birth. So he's saying, you know, that which is born of the spirit is spirit, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, uh, unless one is born of the water and the spirit, uh, you know, it cannot be born again. So, so that is what he is uh, referring to over there. Right. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Uh, okay. So let's look at uh, John chapter fourteen and verse sixteen. Right. For, for, for sixteen, I pray the Helper that He will. Uh, I'll pray the Father that He will give you another Helper that He may abide with you or stay with you for ever. Um, this, verse 17, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you often, so I will come to you. So the, the Lord is saying here that, um, okay, we have another question. Uh, Divya, yeah, go ahead, Divya. Uh, thank you, Pastor. My question is, uh, what is that uh, difference that John the Baptist mentions about uh, the baptism of repentance? Uh, yeah. Like uh, he says, I baptize you with water, but the one who comes after me baptizes with Holy Spirit and fire. So yeah. uh, what is es essentially the difference? Because Holy Spirit also convicts us, right? He brings that repentance. So... Uh, yeah. What's okay, so um, so the uh, so the baptism that John was uh, actually uh, teaching uh, was a baptism of repentance. In the sense, people were repenting, and as a sign of that, he was leading them in in the waters of baptism. Right? People would come, and then they'd be baptized, and uh, you know, it is uh, uh, so that that is something that uh, you know, he was teaching, and also. Uh, by example, you know, he was uh, leading them in that. Uh, but he was referring to, um, and, and Matthew 3, verse 11, I think, you know, where it says that uh, one coming after me, uh, he will baptize with the Holy Spirit. So the word baptize uh, in Greek means baptizo, which means to immerse completely. Right? So, so here is something that the Lord Jesus is going to do. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It's going to be uh, like you're going to be immersed in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to be, you know, you're going to be filled with him. And um, so that is something that the Lord Jesus is going to do. You know? So he is uh, referring to the future work that the Lord Jesus will uh, bring about an encounter, an experience um, that the Holy Spirit, uh, that, that the Lord Jesus will do. So he's referring to that. Okay, so that's the difference. You know, he's here. He's saying a baptism of repentance. You repent. I'm going to lead you in this act of being immersed in water. But the Lord Jesus, you know, He is going to lead you into something which is uh, which is going to be different. It's going to be uh, immersion in the Holy Spirit, baptized the Holy, baptized with the Holy Spirit, and uh, He's going to do that. And the outworking of all that, you know, we're going to see. We're going to look at that. So can we say that one is outward and the other is internal, like when the Holy Spirit comes, the work is internal? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, definitely the work is internal, but it also leads you to make certain choices on the outside also. Right. Um, see, um, so we'll um, we, I, I just I think we'll get more clarity when we look at the baptism of the Holy Spirit and and also you know, what a baptism 
look at it. Um, but yes, yeah, but yes, it's it's a it's an internal work, but it's also manifest on the outside in your choices and the way you live. Yeah, right. Thank you, thank you. Right, Mr. right, Divya. Okay, we'll take a break and then we'll uh, come back to Isaac's question. Um, okay, so uh, we'll take a break and come back, Isaac. Once we come back, we'll answer that question. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Pastor. 